this count as martial arts? Ready for trial! Incinerate! Breath of a flame! Inadmissible evidence! Well, I guess I've mastered both the pen and the sword. People tell me that if I just spoke more softly, others may find it easier to forgive me. But the only reason they think that way is because they've never been branded a pariah before. I condemn you! Freeze to the core! Eye for an eye! Vengeance will be mine! This serenity pot is all yours now. Oh, you needn't worry about that. I've already arranged for a certain little helper to await you within this teapot. She will explain everything you need to know about it. Wow, there was a lot going on in that trailer. It looks like Zhang Li is going to have a new storyline here with a super tough looking dragon to fight. So be careful out there, Zack. Hey, I've leveled up a lot since the last version. Uh -huh. This dragon's got nothing on me. Yeah, sure, Zack. You really expect us to believe that? <laughs> Personally, <laughs> I'm excited for these new characters. They look super cool. Yeah, and that sounds like a solid place to start. So why don't I begin by introducing the new characters first? Sounds good to me.
You want to learn some Favonia's blade work? <laughs> all right, then, I'll teach you. Oh, yes, I'll teach you all right. Mark my words. Introducing our new playable character, Eula, captain of the Knights of Favonius Reconnaissance Company. She carries a cryovision and elegantly wields her frosty claymore. Yeah, the way she handles her weapon is truly amazing. Like she even did a cartwheel with her sword. No wonder she's called the Spindrift Knight. Yeah, her combat style really stands out. Um, forget fighting. Her style is more like dancing or gymnastics. Seriously, she doesn't move like other Claymore wielders at all. Her motions are way lighter and more fluid. Perhaps that's a result of the training passed down through her aristocratic bloodline. Oh, she's a descendant of the family that was once overthrown by the Knights of Favonius, right? Mm-hmm, that is correct. Ooh, I'm sensing a complex backstory here. Now the question comes, why would she be serving in the Knights of Favonius? I don't know, for revenge? Maybe, I don't know. Well, yes and no. Although Eula often talks about taking revenge on others, she doesn't seem to mean it for real. As strange as it sounds, it's just her own way of expressing care for other people. Let's have a look at her skills, shall we? Yes, please. With her elemental skill, Ice Tide Vortex, Eula slashes swiftly, dealing cryo damage. However, her elemental skill has different effects depending on whether you tap or hold the skill button. Ooh, interesting. Tell us more. Yeah. When tapping the elemental skill, Eula gains a stack of Grimheart by hitting an opponent. Grimheart increases Eula's defense and resistance to interruption. Sounds cool for a Claymore wielder. What will happen if we hold her elemental skill then? I was hoping you would ask that. When the skill is held, Eula consumes the stacks of Grimheart, and surrounding opponents will have their physical resistance and cryo resistance decreased. Now, each stack of Grimheart consumed will be converted into an Ice World brand that deals cryo damage to nearby opponents. Ooh, I'm loving her Grimheart mechanic already. Yeah, me too. Eula's Elemental Burst, Glacial Illumination, deals cryo damage to nearby opponents and creates a Lightfall Sword that follows her around for a certain duration. When her own normal attacks, Elemental Skill and Elemental Burst deal damage to opponents, they will charge the Lightfall Sword until it explodes violently once its duration ends. An explosive icy sword? Wow, that seems almost like a contradiction. I mean, ice that explodes? It's like mixing opposites. Right? But it's somehow fitting for her character, you know? A noble heir who joins the family's arch enemy, who moves elegantly but causes violent explosions, who manipulates cryo element but is called the Spindrift Knight. She's full of contradictions. Nice, Sarah. That's pretty deep. Thanks. <laughs> hey, why don't we take a look at our next new playable character in version 1.5? Sounds good. Need a cure for insomnia? Huh. Let me read you the history of the development of Liwe's legal system. None of my friends have ever lasted longer than 20 minutes. The other new playable character in version 1.5 is Yenfei, a legal advisor active in Liwe Harbor. She's a catalyst wielder and holds a pyrovision. Interestingly enough, she happens to be part illuminated beast. Oh, just like Ganyu. Exactly. So, are those two sticks on her head her version of horns, or are they more like antlers? Wait, I thought those were her pigtails, no? No. No, Zach, not at all. Oh. No, those <laughs> are the symbol of her illuminated beast heritage. Okay, so question. Would that mean she knows Rex Lapis then, or would she be bound by a contract with Morax in some way? You mean like as a legal advisor for the God of Contracts? That would be quite the big title, but yeah, something like that? Even Morax doesn't have command of all the Illuminated Beasts. Yenfei is one of the few that didn't sign a contract with him. Oh, why is that? She was born in a peaceful era. Therefore, there was no need for her to fight in any cruel wars like her predecessors. 
Interestingly, as a free illuminated beast, she's put herself in a profession where her job is to interpret laws and help others deal with conflicts and disputes. Okay, so her work is all related to contracts, right? Because I know I saw some sort of gigantic pyro stamp slamming down when she attacks. You know, like the kind of thing you'd see used to stamp a contract? Mm-hmm, you are correct. Both her normal attack, her elemental skill signed edict, and her elemental burst done deal grant her scarlet seals, which decrease Yen Fei's stamina consumption. But these scarlet seals are not the big seal you saw. Oh, so the Scarlet Seals must have been all those little red markings floating around her. That's right. When she uses her charged attack, Yen Fei consumes all Scarlet Seals, which in turn increase her charged attack's area of effect and damage. Oh, so that's what I saw. It sure was. Oh, uh, one thing uh, I forgot to mention is that Yula and Yen Fei have some special connections to one another. Uh, what would a knight in Mondstadt have to do with a legal advisor in Liyue Harbor? Sounds like a mystery. Yes, indeed. One which the travelers will get to discover on their own. Leave it to me. Um, rude. Leave it to us. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, us. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too. And that's all the latest we have on the new characters. Wait a minute. Didn't you forget something? Uh, I don't think so. You know, I, I have a pretty good memory, Zach. Zach was going to ask where we'll get to pull these adorable new characters from, right? Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that all, all in good time. Right now seems to be a good time for us to give away our first redemption code. Oh, now? <laughs> like I said, you never know when they'll appear. Precisely. The first code will be unearthed in three, two, one. only fitting to collect some rewards before we talk about event wishes in version 1.5. Yeah. All right, all right. I know you guys are anxious to hear more. In version 1.5, the two five-star characters Zhongli and Yula will appear successively in their own separate event wishes. Many of the players have been waiting for Zhongli's return and it's finally happening! The players have been waiting, I've been waiting! Okay, to elaborate, <laughs> Yen Fei will be featured in Zhongli's event wish, Gentry of Hermitage. The exact dates and durations for the event wishes will be officially announced later. Aside from the new characters, a new 5-star weapon and two sets of new artifacts will also be released in version 1.5. Ooh, very cool. That new claymore looks pretty ornate. It sort of reminds me of the 5-star bow Elegy for the End from version 1.4. Oh, good observation. Now, this new five-star claymore is called Song of Broken Pines, and it has a physical damage bonus. It has quite a poetic name, too. I wonder if it belongs to the same series as Elegy for the End. Perhaps. And there may even be a hidden story behind them. Ooh, I already feel a story coming! You know, whenever Keith even mentions the word story, I just want to break out the popcorn. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Uh, let me guess, it's a very epic and long story. Ah, yes, a very long story. <laughs> you guys really have big imaginations, you know that? Look, aside from the weapons, there will be two sets of new artifacts for players to collect. Tenacity of the Millilith and Pale Flame. Ooh, awesome. Where can we get them? If past updates are any indication, my bet would be that they'll be in a new domain. And that is correct. The new domain, Ridgewatch, will be available to travelers after the version update. Now, it's located in the mountainous area that connects Mondstadt and Liyue. 
Finally! We're getting a teleport waypoint there. That's always been one of the harder areas for players to reach. Yeah, I bet a lot of people have used their portable waypoints to get there. Now we can save those for some other places. <laughs> In addition to the new gear, some new storylines will be released too. After the version 1.5 update, Diona's Hangout event and Act 2 of Noelle's Hangout event will be available for players to enjoy. Act 2 with Noelle? That is so sweet! I really love the Hangout memory illustrations with Noelle. Okay, but that's not the only Act 2 we're getting in version 1.5. Ooh. Act 2 of Zhang Li's story quest will be released in the update as well, followed by Yula's own story quest. Wow, I already can't wait to see more of Zhang Li's storyline. Can you tell us more about what's going to happen, Keith? Well, as you saw in the trailer, the dragon Ajdaha, who seems to have some, let's say, history with Zhang Li, will be making an appearance in Zhang Li's story quest. Sounds interesting, but uh, who exactly is this Ajdaha? Oh, it was mentioned in the quest about the nameless treasure. Seems like Mr. Zhang Li's past is finding its way back to him. Osmanthus' wine tastes the same as I remember, and meeting those who share the memory leaves an indescribable feeling. Sarah, look, it's him! Ah, it is! <laughs> you guys. Okay, in a word, Ajdaha is going to play an important role in Zhang Li's story quest, and the disturbance it causes will also pose a serious threat to Liu. Furthermore, this dragon will become a weekly boss, so let's take a closer look at it in battle. All right, then. I don't know. It actually looks kind of cute. Uh-oh, Sarah wants a new pet now. <laughs> yeah, kind of <laughs> cute like it's going to rip off my head. <laughs> no, I mean, it's got that little cute smirk happening. I think it's kind of cute. Oh, that's true. Right? And and it's got those branches on its tail. And, and remember this place? There was a girl standing under a tree mumbling about the awakening of some most awe-inspiring individual. Remember? Oh, right. Yeah, so she was talking about Ajdaha. She was. Beneath the tree, or as it's called, the Dragon Queller, is the cavern where Ajdaha was sealed away. This new monster reminds me of Geo Bishops. Absolutely. They have plenty of similar traits. As a boss, Ajdaha can change its element, hence the different colors you see on its body. It seems like when it switches its element, the surroundings in the domain change too. Ah, oh, looks like there will be a variety of conditions for us to deal with. Ooh, are you excited, Zach? Well, with all the lessons I've learned from fighting Geo Bishops, I'm confident that I can crush this Lord of Bishops. Good luck, Zack. You're the man. <laughs> okay, the next new monster we're about to meet will be a new member of the Hypostasis family, the Cryo Hypostasis. Let's see it in action. When the cryohypostasis reaches low HP, it enters a shield to protect itself and recover from the damage. In the meanwhile, it attacks its enemies. Which means us. Huh, but it seems like we'll never be able to finish it off if we can't break the shield. So how can we take its shield down? Oh, I know the answer to this one. Travelers will need to figure it out on their own in version 1.5. <laughs> and with that, the apprentice has become the master. <laughs> yes, you are getting the idea. And there's one other new enemy we're going to see in version 1.5. Perhaps you two remember the Abyss Herald we encountered in version 1.4? Oh, you mean that gigantic blue dude that works for me? 
Well, technically, he would be my gigantic blue dude if you are the traveler. Oh, okay, sorry. Seriously, do you guys bicker about everything? Yes. <laughs> anyway, it, it turns out that another one of the Abyss Order's elite monsters will be making a debut in version 1.5. The Abyss Lector. Let's take a look, shall we? Okay, one thing to be noted is that some of the Abyss Lector's attacks will decrease characters' elemental energy once they hit their opponents. So be sure to dodge those. If only it was that easy. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right, Zach. I know you well enough. What are you thinking about over there? <laughs> well, the Abyss Herald we met before was like an assassin, whereas this Abyss Lector we see now seems more like a mage. The Herald could manipulate the Hydro element, while the Lector manipulates the Electro element. Now that I think about it, what if I could put them on my team? Well, I mean, yeah, practically speaking, that would make a very good team. <laughs> well, that could be what the Lost Sibling was thinking. <laughs> I'm sure the Lost Sibling said, I will have order. And now we have the Abyss Order! <laughs> Well, that's everything we have for our new monsters. So next, we will get a peek of an all-new permanent feature called Serena Teapot, which will be available starting in version 1.5. Zach, I'll leave this part to you. Got it. After we helped the city get through its crisis, the Adepti of Liyue have taken note of our hard work. Knowing we are outlanders who often camp out in the wilds, they decided to give us a Serena Teapot as a gift. Camping in the wilds? Zach, we never camp. Yeah, we we just keep adventuring through the night. <laughs> yeah. Serena <laughs> Teapot. I like the name. So, is this Serena Teapot sort of like Madam Ping's magical teapot? Yeah, it's what's known as a realm within. Ooh, it sounds exciting. That was really nice of them. I hope it wasn't too difficult to make. Well, the Adepti of Liu are mighty illuminated beings with great power. Creating a realm within is nothing but creating a little trinket for them. Keith, you sound so cool. Uh, you anyways, sound cool. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Let's take a closer look inside this so-called teapot. For starters, there are three different realm layouts for us to choose from. Floating Abode, Emerald Peak, and Cool Isle. Wow, so this is what the Adepti would consider just a trinket? <laughs> inside the realm, you'll find Tubby a teapot spirit who manages all the general affairs in the realm within. Oh, just like a butler. Oh my gosh, Tubby is so round and cute! I love it! And it plays an important role in our realm, too. When we raise its trust rank, it will give us some rewards and unlock new features for our realm. For example, the three different realm layouts. We'll have to increase our trust rank if we want to unlock them all. Okay, so question. If I rub Tubby, will it grant me three wishes? What are you talking about? Tubby's not a genie. Okay, okay. I was just thinking, you know, magic lamp, magic teapot. So anyway, how do we increase trust rank with Tubby then? <laughs> Whenever we create new furnishings, Tubby's trust increases. Moreover, with the help of the teapot spirit, we'll collect various blueprints from different sources. Once we've collected the necessary materials for creating furnishings, we can make those furnishings in the Serena teapot and use them to decorate our home. Of course, we can also buy some furnishings directly from Tubby. Good. I'd like an ornate glaze lily pattern incense burner. Really? That's a super specific choice. Well, I'm a super specific guy. <laughs> anyway, this Serena teapot will be a large personal realm that players may manage. They can take their time considering how to decorate the space and can fill it with the things they like to make it feel like home. I see. Okay, uh, then let's prepare some radiant grade Noctilucus Jade for starters. Okay, first of all, your standard of home is way too high. And that's wrong because... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? You do you. You do you. 
Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, if we are short of any practical decoration ideas, we can also apply to enter our friends' realms for some inspiration. We can just stop by for a visit and snap some nice photos. Ooh, that means we can throw parties in our personal realms. That'll be so fun. Are you going to put me on your ultra-exclusive guest list, Zach? <laughs> nope. Zach! <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know, we're going from roughing it in the wild to luxurious house parties. I'm really excited for this one. Yeah, and the realms seem very large, too. Large enough to unleash your imagination. Yeah, we can create views outside the house and arrange the layouts of furnishings. And as we put more furnishings into the Serena teapot, our adeptal energy increases, enabling the realm to produce more realm currency. So, more furnishings increase adeptal energy. I like the sound of that. I knew you'd like that. So, with this new realm currency you mentioned comes a new way of exchanging it, I suppose? That's right. We can exchange realm currency for a variety of materials and rewards. And sometimes a teapot traveling salesman carrying realm treasures might appear. So be sure to check it out. Noted. Whew, there's already a lot on everyone's to-do list for this feature. And there might be even more to come in the future. Let's wait and see what the Serena teapot holds for us in store together. I will, and in the meantime, I will stuff my realm with satisfying furnishings. All right, just please don't make Tubby work too hard. I won't, and as always, I'm sure the travelers will cover my expenses. Uh, huh? Wait, um, wait a minute, what? Can we even afford that? Well, I mean, with the two of you together, you might be able to cover it. I don't have any. No, I don't think so. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you should have seen your faces right then. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's all the news we have for the upcoming Serena Teapot feature. In the next section, we'll get to learn about some exciting events that will be exclusive to version 1.5. But now, it seems about time to give away our second redemption code! Yeah! More rewards! Practically Yay! speaking, the faster you act, the better. Goodies inbound in 3, 2, 1! Welcome back, adventurers! It's time to unveil the special events coming in version 1.5. Yes, I'm ready! Okay, so first on the list is an event called Energy Amplifier Initiation. In this event, a Sumeru researcher will ask us to gather Irminsul fruit fragments. For a time, we'll be entrusted with a mysterious ancient relic, the Energy Amplifier. With this relic, we can unleash the power of the fragments we collect. During the event, this energy amplifier will grant us some effects in combat. So it really is literally amplifying our abilities. Speaking of ancient relics, I feel like Mr. Zhongli would know something about that. Mm-hmm. What are you looking at me for? You know I'm not really Zhongli, right? Oh. But I do happen <laughs> to have some insight on the energy amplifier. For one, there are variations of how you can configure the fragments into the energy amplifier. One variable, motive force, affects how many fragments one can configure. The higher the sum of your character's levels, the higher motive force you can provide to the energy amplifier. With higher motive force, players will be able to equip more high-quality fragments to strengthen their team. What if I don't have enough? As always, Zach, that's where your friends come in. You can borrow up to three characters from your friends to increase your motive force. You got that, Zach? Oh, friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got it. <laughs> uh, so the question then is, how do we gather all the fragments? There are plenty of fragments spread all over the map. We'll search for the fragments in places of interest throughout the open world. 
But it won't be easy to get treasures as powerful as Irminsul fruit fragments. Now, players will have to get rid of any trouble circling around the fragments before they're able to collect them. Ah, that makes sense. And we'll also be able to enter something called a Twisted Realm in the later phase of the event. Twisted Realm? Sounds like a teapot gone wrong. <laughs> Not exactly. There are four domains in the Twisted Realm and each has different bizarre twists. We'll be able to select the difficulty and conditions for the domains we enter, just as in the previous Hypostatic Symphony event. Of course, higher difficulties will grant better rewards. Okay. So this'll be one for players who are looking for some serious challenges. And I should mention that a contract with Diona, the bartender of Mondstadt, will be one of the various rewards from the event shop. Cool! It sounds like we can add her to our team by participating in all kinds of activities from the event. That's right! Go get her! Our next event to introduce is called Battlefront Misty Dungeon. Huh? This sounds like a completely different kind of game. In this event, there will be six themed trials for us to complete, and we'll only be able to use characters from a set pool of trial characters from the event. Throughout the trials, our team will not form any elemental resonance, and food and potions in our inventory will also not be accessible. Ah, now that sounds tough. <laughs> but before each trial, we can preview the monsters we'll be encountering, along with some corresponding tips and tasks. So, it is possible for us to choose characters that fit the conditions before we start. Nice, right? Yeah, that's a relief. Whew. So, what do we need to do to pass these trials? In each trial, players need to activate all three of the ancient runes within the time limit to gain access to the final challenge. There are benediction mechanics with the trials, which allow players to obtain certain bonus effects and make it easier to complete the trials. At the same time, there are also some automated weapon systems that will detect and attack any intruders. Players will need to use the appropriate reactions to temporarily disable these devices. We're definitely going to have to use our heads to get the right strategies. Totally! And with rewards like Primo Gems, Mora, and other materials awaiting, it'll definitely be worth a shot! Primo Gems? Oh, I'm in! Our next event is called Mimi Tomo. Sounds... hilly -churlian? You nailed it! This event is about a certain unusual hilly churl we might encounter in various locations. I see! The one that throws Primo Gems at players, right? Okay, to viewers who are searching for where you can find this unusual hilly churl right now, just know you can't actually use the primo gems it throws at you. Lately, this unusual hilly churl has been stirring up trouble on the merchant routes. It's time for us to teach it a lesson. But this hilly churl is not an easy one to trace. So, we'll need to borrow some help from an expert. Perhaps you remember the hilly churlian expert, Ella Musk? Yeah, you mean that little girl in the library? So it's time for her to teach us a lesson. <laughs> yeah, we'll be utilizing the handy handbook of Hilly Churlian from her to communicate with other Hilly Churls for intel on the whereabouts of this unusual Hilly Churl. That seems like fun, but I'm not sure I can memorize that much Hilly Churlian. You can write it down, Zach. Or you can take a screenshot. Oh, yeah, a screenshot. Now that's good advice. The only question now is, how reliable is this handy handbook of Hilly Churlian? After all, it has a disclaimer on its title page saying it cannot be held responsible for any consequences of its use. Wait, so you're saying it could potentially do more harm than good? If that's the case, we'll have to persuade the Hilly Churls by physical means. Ooh, now that's what I'm talking about. It could be quite persuasive that way. That wouldn't be persuasion! Wait, now I'm confused. We're talking about bribing them with some apples or something, right? Like that type of persuasion? Oh, apples. Yeah, yeah apples. <laughs> and now you're making me feel like I'm a bad person. <laughs> anyway, players will gain some furnishing blueprints, primo gems, and other rewards from the event. So be sure not to miss out on this one. Our next event is simply called Wind Trace. Personally, I'd like to call it Hide and Seek. All right, sounds fun. And in case you're wondering, Wind Trace actually originates from when ancient nobles were hunting for rebels in Mondstadt. Uh, okay. Now things are starting to sound a little bit scary. <laughs> no worries, Zack. Today it's transcended from its dark history, passing down only the names of the two sides, Hunter and Rebels. Oh, so what does a round of Wind Trace look like? 
I'm glad you asked, Zach. Players will be playing in contested zones. They will be allocated one of the two sides, the hunter or the rebels. The rebels hide and the hunter seeks. But there's more to it than just that. The rebels can use their windward arts to disguise themselves, place bait, or temporarily enter a hidden state. All right, sounds interesting. How about the hunter? What can they do? The hunter can use various arts to detect the location of the rebels and disable their tricks and disguises. So, the two sides are really going at it then. <laughs> yeah, and during the game, favors will descend upon the area at random, and both sides can pick up these favors to help charge up their own so-called secret favor. There are five contested zones in the open world, so those who are familiar with all the areas and terrain will have some advantages. Good news for those treasure chest hunters out there. <laughs> yeah. Players will obtain Wind Trace coins from the event and unlock a variety of rewards, including a Wind Trace themed name card. But if you play the game in co op mode with your friends, or if you've already reached the daily limit of obtainable Wind Trace coins, then you won't be able to gain any more. Ah, oh, I see. I hope you'll all enjoy this little game. Our final event is called Overflowing Mastery. Hmm, we had Leyline Overflow before, right? That's right! Only this time, we will have doubled talent level up materials. During the event, we will have three chances daily to collect double rewards using original resin from selected domains of mastery. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time we'll have an event that doubles talent level up materials. That's huge! Exactly! So if you need to grind for talent level up materials, this will be your chance. I bet everybody's gonna love that! All right, that's about all we have for the special events in version 1.5. As always, the last part of our version previews will be regarding new optimizations and adjustments coming to the game. Keith, would you like to explain the coming changes for version 1.5 to our viewers? Sure thing. Starting from version 1.5, the cost of original resin to claim rewards for the first three weekly bosses will be reduced from 60 to 30. Okay, that's half the cost. Yeah. And we'll have a total of four weekly bosses, so that means we'll be able to claim rewards from all the weekly bosses using a single day's resin. And we'll even have ten original resin left over. Oh, check you out, Sarah. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Next, after the version update, character companionship experience gained while playing in-team with other players in co-op mode will be doubled. So, if we want to accelerate our friendship with some characters and learn more about their stories, we can defeat bosses or clear domains with other players in co-op mode. Oh yes! No need to remind me on the importance of friends again. Oh, sorry, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> need some more of those. The third optimization will be about mailing alerts for when events are ending. After the version update, Genshin Impact will send mail alerts to players before any limited time events end. Yeah, considering all the unique gameplay and loads of rewards from those limited time events, it would be a pity to miss them. Definitely. For players who are too busy to check the end time of each event, the mail alert will for sure come in handy. Yeah, absolutely. Our last optimization coming in version 1.5 will be about slimming down the game's overall size. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. With this optimization, players can manage the voiceover files they've installed. If you no longer want to keep the audio files for a certain language, you can delete the corresponding voiceover files manually. And that audio pack will not update in future version updates. I imagine that could save quite a bit of space. I know audio files can be massive. Aww, but what if they decide to delete the English voiceovers? No, don't delete us, please! Don't you want to hear more of me? Well, there's not much of us in there anyway. <laughs> oh, well, okay, yeah. I guess it doesn't hurt that much when you put it that way. No, 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 it, it does hurt because Zhongli has a lot to say. So, so please, keep, keep the English voice. <laughs> <laughs> if you like us, then please keep the English voiceovers, everyone. And on that note, it's time to release the third redemption code to our loyal viewers. Yay! Are you ready? Three, two... One, go!
Well, I hope everyone has caught all the codes, and I think it's about time to wrap up the show. Ooh, time really flew by. Yeah, I know, right? How did you like your first special program, Sarah? I've loved being here with you guys. It's so special and fun. Plus, the twins got to be reunited, even if it was only for a little bit. Um, I really hope that they'll invite me for more special programs in the future because this was super fun. Yeah, I hope so too. A and how about you, Keith? How did you like doing the special program? Are you kidding? I love this. I mean, what's better than being able to make all of these announcements? I mean, everyone's so hyped to find out what's in store, and uh, we get to be the people to share that with them, so uh, it's amazing. Plus, I am looking forward to spending quite a bit of time in the Serena teapot. Yeah, me too. <laughs> all right, thanks for watching the Genshin Impact version 1.5 special program, everyone. And I hope you all have fun in your teapots. Bye, everybody. See you in version 1.5. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Are you still there? Yes. I was hoping you'd still be there because we have an extra special surprise for you. Check this out.